Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Chester, will you take this stuff down to the depot and see that it gets in the mail for me, huh? Yes, sir. Now, what's he doing? Huh? What's who doing? Old man McCready's boy, Mr. Dillon. What's he doing, anyway? <laughs> well, you're the one who's looking out the window, Chester. Well, he ain't up to no good. Look at him. Well, I guess I'd better, or I'll never find out. Oh, he's jumping on his horse. There he goes. Well, what was he doing, Chester? Pulling around that wagon team there. He was messing with the traces for some reason. Oh, well, let's go have a look. You know, that Billy McCready always was a wild one. Oh, he's young, Chester, and he's only got his old man to bring him up. Sure, he'll probably grow up to be just as mean as old man is. Well, I hope not. I wonder whose wagon this is, anyway. I don't know, Mr. Dillon. Ain't much wagon, though, is it? Must belong to some starving sod buster. Yeah. Chester. Mm-hmm. Come here. Look. That's what Billy was doing. Well, he's got them traces half cut, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. They'll still hold for quite a few miles, though. Enough to leave whoever's driving this wagon a long way out on the prairie. Well, now, why would Billy do a thing yeah. like that? What are you fellas doing with that harness? Oh, is this your wagon, Mr.... Our wagon, me and my wife's here. What are you men doing with it? Oh, your traces have been cut, man. Cut? What do you mean? Come here, take a look. Well, who done that? Billy McCready. I told you, Jim. I told you something was going to happen. What's Billy McCready got against you people? Don't you tell them nothing, Jim. Ain't none of their business. Look, I'm a U.S. Marshal, man. Maybe I can help you. You, Marshal Dillon? That's right. Tell them our name, Jim. It's Gabriel. I've got a quarter section near Sky Mound. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, that's on the way to McCready's ranch, isn't it? Marshal, McCready can have all the land he wants, except mine. I filed on that land eight months ago, and I've been living on it like the law says, and I've been proving it up. It's mine, and he ain't going to get it. Well, hasn't McCready got enough land for his cattle out there without needing yours? It ain't the land so much as the water, Marshal. I've opened me a spring, and I've dug a well. It's the water he wants. They're trying to hound us off there, Marshal. Yeah, like Billy cutting our traces. They figured we'd lose the team on the way home, I guess. Who's they? The old man and Billy? Old man don't come around. It's Billy and one of them riders, Bart. A real laundry-looking fella. They're the ones. But it's McCready tells them what to do. They're going to start plaguing us real bad now. Yeah, and I'll fight them. Me and the boy will stop them. Oh, you got a son? He's down buying grain. We're picking him up on the way out of town. Ah. Well, you better mend those traces first. Yeah. I'll Look, uh, them. Gabriel, I think Chester and I better ride out with you, huh? Maybe we can find out what uh, Billy had in mind. This is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. This is it. 
L&M filters, perfect gift for Christmas, too. Light and mild, L&M filters, holiday cotton just for you. Holiday cotton just for you. Holiday cotton just for you. For the filter tip smokers on your Christmas list, this is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M stands out for flavor. The Miracle Tip draws easy. You enjoy all the taste. L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip. King size or regular, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. It's got everything. It was dark by the time we got to the Gabriel place. And when we did, we saw lamps burning inside the house. At first, Gabriel thought his wife's sister and her family had arrived from back east. But then we noticed three horses standing outside. Families came west by wagon, not horseback. So I told the boy to take their team around to the shed while Gabriel and his wife walked into the house as though they suspected nothing. They left the door open. Chester and I got down and sneaked up to where we could hear what was happening. I hope they don't get hurt, Mr. Dillon. And Gabriel seems like good people. Quiet now, Chester. Get back here so soon, Keep out Gabriel. Of the Same way we got the dog in our wagon. That old man McCready, Mr. Dillon. Billy, you been lying to me? No, Pa. I've done what you told me. Honest, I did. You shut up about what I told you. No matter none, Mr. McCready. Nobody's going to believe nothing that Gabriel say. Why don't you give up and go back east, wherever you come from, Gabriel? There's too many people out here already. And there's more coming right here, too. What? My wife's sister and her husband. And they're bringing the little girl with them. Mm, one more man to fight, huh? All right, Gabriel, I'll tell you something. You must have noticed your harness being cut and fixed it. There, he admits Otherwise, you'd be out Chester. on the prairie somewhere learning your first lesson. And when you did get home, you were going to find this place wrecked. We've been sitting here resting some before we got to work on it. It ain't too late, Mr. McCready. Sure, Pa. Let them watch us wreck it. Might be more interesting that way. Maybe you're right, son. Maybe that'll learn them. Okay, get over there in the you're corner, right, Gabriel. Uh, you sure are, Mr. Dillon. Right over there, now. Evening, McCready. March, you move your hand any closer to that gun and I'll shoot it off. I ain't doing nothing. What are you doing out here, Marshal? Same thing I'd be doing if I was in Dodge, McCready, enforcing the law. Well, what are you bothering us for? Can we drop in here for a neighborly visit without everybody making a fuss? You're bad as Gabriel. You've been talking real wild. You ought to hear him. I did hear him, McCready. I heard you, too. Huh? Well... That don't mean nothing. You can't jail a man for talking. You're sure shy at the idea of going to jail, don't you, McCready? When I first come out here, there wasn't no jails. Gabriel tells me that you've stayed out of this business so far. You've let Bart and Billy do the talking for you. What they do, I'll take the blame for. You bet you will. And the first thing that goes wrong out here, any trouble at all, you're the one that's going to jail first, McCready. All right, now you get out of here. All three of you. Come on, boys. Stinks in here anyways. Well, you sure made the old man tuck his tail, Marshal. Don't you be so sure, Jim. McCready's as smart as he's mean. I'm afraid you're right, ma'am. You'll think of something. But as soon as you find out what it is, you'll let me know. Hello, Doc. Well, come on, sit down. Unless you're in a hurry to get to your uh, hospital. <laughs> my hospital? Oh, my, oh, Matt, my <laughs> hospital. 
Oh, well, if the day comes when I'm in a hurry to get to my hospital, you'll be warden of the Dodge City Penitentiary. Hey, well, that sounds like a nice, warm inside job, Doc. Yeah, and I hope you get it, too, Matt. <laughs> Uh-oh. And when you do, I hope old man McCready there is your first customer. McCready? Oh, oh I see him. Uh, he sees you, too. Guess he wants to talk to you. Well, like he says, I can't jail him for talking. Morning, Marshal. Doc? Hello. Oh, what can I do for you, McCready? Nothing, Marshal. Can a man stop and say hello? Sure. Sure. All right, what's on your mind? All right, then, I'll tell you. I've been thinking about it all week. So I went over to the land office to see if Gabriel's claim is filed proper. Mm-hmm. That is it. Maybe. Maybe not. But I'll find a way, Marshal. Look, McCready, you got plenty of grass out there. You got the whole prairie. Sure, but Gabriel's camping on the only piece that's got good water. Well, go look for some springs yourself. That's what he did. Marshal! Hey, Marshal! It's Gabriel. Say, he sure got that horse in the lather. Yeah, you stay right here, McCready. I ain't done nothing to him. Oh, Doc. Doc, it's you I was looking for. What's wrong, Gabriel? It's my boy. He's sick. He's awful sick. You gotta come, Doc. Well, what's the matter with him? I don't know. But my wife's sister, she got here a few days ago from back east, and their little girl was sick the same way, and she died the first night before I could even get started for Dodge. Oh, well, what's it like, Gabriel? Uh, how's he showing? Well, he gets awful cramps in his legs, mostly, and he turns kind of blue all over, and he can't talk much. Turns blue? Does his stomach hurt? <laughs> Something terrible. He's always yelling for water, but it don't seem to do no good. Uh-huh. And this is the same thing the little girl died of? It's just like it. He ain't going to die too, is he, Doc? I'll do what I can for him, Gabriel. What is it, Doc? Uh, some kind of a poison? I hope I'm wrong, Matt. But those symptoms are pretty plain. Sounds like cholera to me. What? Cholera? Yes. That little girl and her family must have brought it from back east. Gabriel, you're right back home right now. Tell your wife to burn all the clothes and the blankets and anything the little girl touched. And make everybody keep away from your boy as much as possible, you understand? And whatever you do... Don't get anything you feed him out of mixed up with yours. Keep it separate. Collar is mighty contagious. You can all catch him. I'll tell him. I'll tell him you were coming. I'll hurry. Well, ain't no business of mine. I'm going on out to the ranch. Goodbye, gentlemen. <coughs> McCready wouldn't care if they all died. No, I guess he wouldn't, Doc. Uh, I'll walk in onto your office, huh? It's going to take me a little time to get ready. It's bad, man. Collar is real bad. You're worried tonight, Matt. No, it's just that I can't help thinking about the Gabriels, Kitty. That's a terrible thing. Those poor people. Look, uh, don't say anything about it around here, though, huh? I wouldn't want to get a panic started. Oh, of course I won't, Matt. But do you think there's any danger of it spreading to Doc? Well, Doc says not as long as the family stays out of town. Yeah, but they might catch it from each other. They ought to burn everything Mrs. Gabriel's sister brought with her. Well, that's what Doc said, Kitty. Well, for once I'm right. Because it makes sense, I guess. Yeah. I, uh, I've never been around cholera. Have you? No. No, but I've heard a lot about it. Seems to me in this job I've heard a lot about practically everything there is. <laughs> and a lot there isn't, too, I bet. Oh, I'll say. Hey, Marshal! Marshal! Gabriel, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for Doc. Where is he? Doc? Oh, he never showed up, Marshal. And I just can't find him no place. Well, he should have been there this afternoon. Well, that's what I figured. And then come dark, I got worried. My boy's worse, Marshal. I just got to find him, even if it is the middle of the night. Well, he left here. What could have happened to him, Marshal? Well, I got a pretty good idea. Come on, Gabriel. I'm riding back with you. Your place is right on the way to where I'm headed. Where's that? McCready's. <laughs> My 
house, Marshal, but I don't see Doc Buggy nowhere. Well, he came horseback, Gabriel. I doubt if he's here, though. Yeah, it must be eight, nine o'clock already. Well, it was after two when we left Dodge last night. We made good time, though. Oh, there's your wife. Yeah, she's going to be awful disappointed. How's the boy, Jenny? Why? Oh. I couldn't find Doc. I have an idea of where he is, Miss Gabriel, and I'm riding on to find him. I know where Doc is, Marshal. You do? I figured it all out after my husband left for Dodge last night. It's easy. There's nothing in the world would keep Doc from coming when someone's sick. Except one thing. What, Jenny? Somebody stopped him from coming. Oh, well, that's what the marshal figured, but I didn't want to worry you about it. Miss Gabriel, if McCready's holding Doc somewhere, he isn't going to hold him long. I promise you that. He wants us all dead. And he'll keep Doc till we are. Except I got him beat. Well, what do you mean? I'll tell you in a minute. Look what's coming behind you. Hey, it's McCready and that fellow Bart. I'm going to get my rifle. No, Gabriel. No, wait. They're not going to start any trouble. Yeah, they better not. Morning, Gabriel. Miss Gabriel. Marshal. Hello. Uh, come out to help, Marshal. Yeah, that's right. Well, me and Bart thought we'd ride over and see if there wasn't anything we could do. I mean it. I'm trying to be neighbor. Get back on your horse, McCurdy, and show me where you got Doc hit out. What? Doc's here, ain't he? What are you talking about? I said get back on your horse. Bart, you tense one more muscle, and I'm going to take it. You're going for your gun. All I'm doing is breathing. All right. Now we're wasting time, McCready. Now wait, Marshal. I don't know nothing about Doc. Listen to me, you men. The Marshal's right. We're wasting time. But I can save some. How? Where's your boy, McCready? He's at the ranch. You don't feel good. Why? He come by here yesterday, late, after my husband started for Dodge. After I got everything figured. Said he'd been away on the prairie a couple of days. He told me he was here. He didn't cause you no trouble. No, he didn't. It's not much trouble to bring a man a cup of water. Well, that's all he wanted. I suppose you wouldn't give him any. I gave him some. I went in the house and got it for him. And what are you complaining about? Didn't he thank you pretty enough? My son's in there, McCready. And he's been drinking water, too. Lots of it. He and Billy, they used the same cup. Doc said don't let nobody touch what your boy used. My husband told me what Doc said. Billy ain't feeling good. He's got it. He's got cholera off in that cup. I expect he has. Cholera. Now I reckon you'll turn Doc loose. Billy will die. Sure he'll die. Without Doc. No. It's up to you, McCready. All right. I admit it. We're holding Doc. Where is he, McCready? In a cabin I got five, six miles from here. We took him, me and Bart. We put on bandanas and we didn't say nothing so he wouldn't recognize us. He's there, locked in tight. Like I said, McCready, get on your horse. Sure. Sure, but let's hurry. tip smokers, this is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Yes, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. Lets you enjoy all the taste. L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. L&M stands out for highest quality tobaccos, low nicotine tobaccos, L&M tobaccos, light and mild. L&M's got everything, king size or regular. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. Yes, L&M stands out 
from all the rest. I expected to find Doc fighting wild when we reached the cabin. But instead he was pale, sober, and as calm as I'd ever seen him. And when McCready demanded that he go take care of Billy first, Doc didn't even answer him. He just mounted his horse and quietly asked me to lead him to the way to Gabriel's. When we got there, McCready sent Bart off to see how Billy was doing. And then sat down with Chester and me in the dirt outside the cabin and waited. It was a long, late in the afternoon when Doc finally came out. And he walked over to us. How is he, Doc? Any better? He's dead, Chester. Dead? Died about a half an hour ago. I've been telling the family what they've got to do to keep from catching it themselves. You already told Gabriel that back in Dodge, Doc. Haven't they done what you said? No. And I didn't think they would without my coming out here and prodding them. It's hard for people to burn what few clothes and things they have, Matt. Yeah. Come on, Doc. Now the boy's dead, let's get over to my place. We're wasting time, John, here. McCready. Hey, look. Ain't that Bart coming? Yeah, that's Bart. Guess he got tired waiting for us. Shouldn't have left Billy alone, though. How are the Gabriels taking it, Doc? Hard to say, Matt. They aren't talking much and they aren't crying at all. That's about what I'd expect. They're pretty lean people. It's a good thing they are. What are you doing here, Bart? Why didn't you stay with Billy? We're about to leave now. Mr. McCready. But what is it, Bart? What are you trying to say? Billy's dead. Died right there in his bed. I couldn't do nothing for him. (laughs) He's dead. I didn't know what to do for him. He got all blue and real cold. And he choked up and died. Doc should have been there. I should have made him go. It's your fault, Doc. Chester? Yeah, Doc? Go into the house and tell the Gabriels to come out here. All right, Doc. And tell them about Billy McCready. I don't want to see them Gabriels. I don't ever want to see them. If they'd never come here, my boy would be alive now. He's too young to die. Billy's too young. It ain't right. It just ain't right. I've done all I could, Mr. McCready. I put blankets on them. I straightened him out when he cramped up. I poured a lot of water into him. It ain't your fault, Bart. You ain't a doctor. How would you know what to do? You didn't kill him. That's enough of that talk, McCready. Why don't you shut up? It wasn't your son that died, Marshal. It was mine. Here come the Gabriels. Their son died, too, you remember? Yeah, yeah. What do you want, Doc? I want to explain something. To you and to Mrs. Gabriel. Now, don't you start preaching, Doc. I ain't in no mood to listen to your talk. You'll listen, McCready, if I have to ram a stick in your mouth and tie you against that tree over there. All right, go on, Doc. First, I want to ask Mrs. Gabriel something. Chester told me about Billy, Doc. Looks like I killed him. No. You only wanted him to get sick so as McCready would have to turn me loose. You thought he'd do that right away so I could save your boy and Billy, too. Could have saved Billy if he hadn't come here first. No, that's where you're all wrong. What do you mean? Medicine's still a pretty crude science, Mrs. Gabriel. Someday, maybe they'll know, but right now I've got no more idea how to treat cholera than I do insanity. There's absolutely nothing I know to do for it. Is that true, Doc? It's true. And I did kill Billy. Killed him with my own hand. No, Mrs. Gabriel. If you'd known I couldn't help him, you'd never let him touch that cup. No. No, of course I wouldn't. Oh, I never would have. It's McCready that's the murderer. He hoped keeping me away from here would see you all dead. That's what he wanted. (laughs) 
But all MacReady's going to get for his murder in ways is the death of his own son. So you think about it, MacReady, the rest of your life. And remember what it says in the Bible? The Lord does have his way of vengeance. After all, doesn't he? All right, come on, everybody. Let's get to work. See what we can do to keep anybody else from catching this. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know, I'd like to pass on an idea that will help you with your Christmas shopping. Go down your list and check all the filter tip smokers. And then buy them all gift cartons of L&M's. They'll appreciate it because L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. And L&M sure make a beautiful gift in their handsome holiday carton. King size or regular. L&M... America's best filter tip cigarette. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Virginia Christine, Vic Perrin, Clayton Post, and Sam Edwards. Farley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Hi, everyone. This is Perry Como, and I'd like to remind you that we're on for Chesterfield with all the top tunes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights. This coming week, we'll be doing our new RCA Victor release, Home for the Holidays, a song that we all feel really expresses the spirit of the season. We hope that you'll join us. And don't forget those Chesterfields. Pick up a carton for the weekend. You'll enjoy them. Remember, listen again next week for another story of the Western Frontier when Marshal Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's drama. It's gun smoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is the CBS Radio Network.